Hey guys, how's it going? This is David Harrington. Uh, I'll be doing a quick video tutorial about doing some content creation and concept art using Corel Painter, and uh, hopefully you'll find some of this information useful. Uh, I've sped up this video a little bit, so I'll be going over quickly some of the, uh, the things I'll be doing in the video as it goes along. So pretty much anything I draw or anything I can create comes from these three basic forms that I'm drawing right now. The sphere, the box, and the cylinder. Um, now all these forms can be combined to create a number of different things, uh, pretty much anything you can imagine, whether it be aliens or castles or um, you know space fortresses, whatever you can imagine can be created using these, these basic forms and their permutations. So I'm just showing right now some different things like tubes and castles and all kinds of different things you can make from those three basic forms. Uh, not only that, you can simplify more complicated forms into those basic forms by combining them. So you'll see me here kind of demonstrating how to basically block out a human form uh, using those basic shapes, like using a sphere for the head, a uh, cylinder for the neck, and an elongated sphere for the, the rib cage. Um, and this is just to give your, your drawings a little bit more volume and uh, help them read a little bit more dimensionally. So if you're doing concept art, you want to have dimensional drawings so that a modeler can look at your drawing and understand the volume that's supposed to be implied there. Um, yeah, so the other good thing about drawing dimensionally is it makes it really easy to light your forms. So you can look at this guy up here, and because he's kind of constructed out of basic shapes that I understand, I know that the form shadows that are on this guy are going to be parallel to the light source. So this can just help to kind of make it simpler for you to light your objects and for people to look at your drawings and be able to tell you know what the dimensions are, uh, you know where the cast shadows are going to fall. Um, and anybody who's modeling your, your 2D art into 3D art will understand what you're trying to imply. So drawing dimensionally has a lot of different benefits especially in the industry, um, you really want to try to get uh, as much clarity in your drawings and in your designs as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and start just kind of a quick little demo. We'll do a, a small structure. Um, I'm going to kind of do like a little mausoleum, kind of a, like a large prop or a small structure. Um, something kind of relatively simple to kind of illustrate the way I work and some of the things I think about when I'm developing um, concept art, um, and hopefully, you know, some of this stuff will be useful and uh, it'll inspire you to to figure out ways to work on your own and uh, kind of maybe modify some of these techniques you see here. So what you just saw is I laid down kind of a thumbnail sketch with the pen tool. Um, I use that pen brush a lot, uh, and then I kind of lighten that by taking the whole selection and cutting it onto its own layer and then reducing the opacity and then I flatten it back down and I start drawing back on top of that so my initial sketch um, is very loose kind of just a vague impression of what I want to create and then I'll start to go in and start to develop a little bit more of the uh, the forms and the shapes that I, I kinda wanna play with um, you can see here I'm trying to like push different angles into the drawing to prevent it from being very kind of stiff um, I want a kind of a stylized, a little bit more kind of whimsical look for the structure, so I'm kind of uh, experimenting with, with that kind of stuff. So as I kind of work the drawing, um, I always make sure that I zoom out and kind of observe the whole silhouette. Um, try not to make sure that doesn't get lost. Um, a lot of times if I'm zoomed in real close, uh, I'll tend to lose some of the original thought behind the drawing. So right here you can kind of see that I've lightened the drawing a little bit and I'm kind of plotting my perspective grid in. Um, I like to put my perspective grid in after I've kind of got the drawing to kind of a loose uh, resolve state. Um, I find that if I plot my perspective grid ahead of time and then try to draw into that uh, the drawing almost always comes out way too stiff, so I find that uh, kind of working the drawing ahead of time and then putting the perspective grid in after really helps me out um, 
can kind of help me keep everything kind of loose and free in the beginning and then I can kind of tighten up the, the dimensionality of the drawing as I work in the details later on. So right now you can kind of see that I'm uh, refining, <coughs> sorry, refining the line art um, a little bit at a time. Uh, each time I lighten the drawing I'll, I'll go back in and the, the lines become thinner um, so the, the kind of placement of the lines become a little bit more deliberate and a little bit less um, gestural. So I don't always do a kind of finished line art like this for all of my paintings or concepts, but because this is kind of a, a quick demo that I wanted to give everybody kind of like a step-by-step -step process that pretty much anybody could um, take and run with. So um, if you're new to doing this kind of art, um, starting with line art and then painting into your line art is a really good way to kind of make sure that you have all the elements in there that you need so it'll help you with your draftsmanship, it'll help you with your um, retention of form, it'll help you with perspective um, and for me line art has always been kind of a pure form of design where I'm not worried about lighting or um, that kind of thing I'm just kind of worried about the design of the thing overall and then I can worry about tone later so now you can kind of see me starting to lay in some of the uh, the base paint and color um, for my kind of quick concept here. Um, I'm using a brush called Digital Water. Uh, I love this brush. I use it all the time. It's one of my favorites. If not, I think it is my favorite brush in Painter for sure. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm kind of laying in layers of Digital Water one at a time with a very low opacity. Um, kind of similar to the way I would use traditional watercolor where I build it up in very slow kind of very transparent layers and what this allows me to do is kind of add um, a little bit of ambient light to the whole painting kind of like the light you would see on a cloudy day um, and now I've kind of dropped in the background so that all that ambient light can kind of sit in a little bit of a darker value so I can actually drop in a key light um, so what I'm doing here is actually kind of what I would call a pretty unconventional uh, painting technique or actually use the glow tool to blast one side of the structure with light and then I mask it out and then I slowly start to mask that light back in with um, a layer mask and what this kind of allows me to do is kind of focus on the lighting um, and which planes are facing the light and which planes are not being hit by light so uh, as you can see I've got two layers one with the light blasted on it and then I'm kind of masking that in and out so I can turn that light on and off so you can kind of see it there um, to kind of see how I want that to, to hit and how, how intense I want that to be in certain areas and that's not really a traditional technique it's primarily a digital technique but for me I found that it helps me control my uh, my light source and gives me a lot of freedom to play around with what I want to do with my light sources. Um, after that I kind of go opaque. I'll flatten everything down. And as you can see here I'm starting to put in kind of some of the more opaque details. I'm working on top of the drawing. Uh, lightening the drawing as I work around it. Um, I'll start to put in a little bit more of that kind of opaque paint on top of things. Um, here I'm adding a little bit of a rim light on the back. I don't always add rim light to my paintings, but for something like this, that's just like a standalone concept, uh, it can be really useful to kind of amplify the outer edge or silhouette of something um, and just make it really clear. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times um, when I've been modeling something and the concept had a really clear rim light, but that was actually really helpful to uh, to really figure out the shape of the back of something. A lot of times kind of flipping the painting back and forth helps me uh, kind of make sure that the light feels believable or kind of helps me gauge where the light should be and, and uh, make it a little bit more believable. Um, with a quick concept like this or a little demo like this I'm not super concerned with making 
the most realistic painting ever, um, or the most finished painting ever. This is kind of just a quick example of the way I work. Um, but I do want to make sure that it has at least enough form and uh, lighting in there to be believable. So if a modeler looked at this, they could be um, pretty clear on what I was, what I wanted uh, out of the model, just from looking at it. Um, so here I'm kind of just refining some of the smaller details. Uh, most of the big, the big shapes are in there. So now I'm kind of tightening um, some of the tight, the little, littler parts of the painting adding a little bit of weathering so it doesn't feel like this is a um, kind of newer structure. You want it to feel kind of old. And that helps give it uh, a little bit of a sense of story, um, a little bit of a history to it. So it has a little bit more interest, um, adding some reflections there from the windows as if the surface was a little bit wet. Um, and Painter has a really cool way of making the digital paint feel like real paint. And that's something I've always really loved about the program is that it really can, if you're using certain brushes, it can really feel like, um, you know, it can feel wet, it can feel textural, it can feel like, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, viscosity to the paint and stuff, and that, that can be really interesting, uh, and that's something that a lot of digital painting software doesn't have, um, and that's really cool just kind of refining details a little bit more. Um, yeah, making sure all the shadows are kind of, you know, these aren't like mental ray defined shadows or anything, but just kind of implied shadows to, to give it a sense of, um, a little bit more of a sense of realism. Um, now I'm adding a little bit of color to the, the wood on the door, um, give it a little more of that color breakup. I work a lot like this where I, I start very monochromatically and then I start to glaze in other colors. Um, I like working like that because I can kind of control how colorful or how uh, desaturated I want a piece to be. Um, it really depends on the mood of the piece. If I want to go for something um, very vibrant and colorful and cartoony um, I can do that, or I can try to keep it uh, a little bit more uh, desaturated, or um, however however I feel like the mood of the piece will will dictate. So this is kind of um, pretty much as far as I'm going to go with this quick concept. It's not the most finished piece ever, but you, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of the way I work, and maybe it'll give you some ideas about the way you can work in Corel Painter. To, uh, to do some artwork like this. So hopefully that's been helpful if, uh, if you've been watching and um, I'll be making more videos in the near future and uh, hopefully you'll check them out. So thank you very much.